So here's the further destruction of my Epson printer. I brought this to the garage because I didn't want the ink inside, if there's any left over, to uh, spill on my floor. Usually there's an ink well somewhere for the uh, extra ink. So I just pull this apart, I unscrew what I could unscrew and I found some of these gears here which I, I might be able to salvage and use. There's some springs and stuff. YouTube uh, Tom LaRue responded to my video and suggested I can use the lens from the scanner to mount it on a goggle and use it as a magnifying glass. That was an excellent idea. I would probably follow him up on that. So now this is taken apart. I can see immediate, immediately a very nice motor here. Looks like a DC motor. I'm trying to read what's the specification, but I have to take it apart. But this is a nice motor, and that's a another motor down inside another DC motor this one has a runs on a gear and a belt okay I unscrew a few more screws and this whole thing is coming apart just this hose here okay now, as I was fearing, there was a bit of uh, leftover ink. At least uh, they're not dripping or anything. They're pretty much dry. That's just the leads to the mold. Uh, let's see. You buy something like this. In Radio Shack, it's gonna cost you five, ten, fifteen, twenty dollars. Five volt, twelve volt motor that looks very strong. It can be a generator. So I just hooked up the motor to the voltmeter to see what kind of voltage I can get. Three. Let's see. Five six volt. Five point five volts. Yeah, it has to rotate in the correct direction because this is this is a DC motor. Yeah, it's uh, lighting that LED gets maximum 5-6 volt with a hand spin. Not too bad. I have to be careful about taking this motor out. Maybe I'll try to keep part of the frame. So if I were to use this, I can mount it with part of the frame. Looks like this is the control board here. Some ribbon cables attached to it. Capacitors and stuff inside. Let's open this up. This is uh, one of my favorite screwdrivers. It was on so here's a summary of my teardown of the Epson printer. A lot of plastic parts here. You can probably reuse some of the plastics and use that as a plastic glue. You need something that can dissolve the plastic like acetone or something like that. Uh, some kind of paint thinner. 
use a glass bottle, put some paint thinner in, uh, break up the plastic pieces and deposit them into the glass bottle with a tight fitting lid and wait for the plastic to melt. It will melt in a couple of days and then you got a bottle of plastic glue. And what you can use that for is to repair broken pieces of plastic. If you want to mount something here that is plastic, of course you can use hot glue. But if you use the plastic glue, it will be the because acetone can melt plastic, it actually will weld the plastic and dissolve part of it so you can have a good uh, glue to uh, repair your plastic. So that's one thing you can use that for. So this is what's left over. I've shown this before in my other video and this is a scanner part. This white strip here is actually a very thin bar. Actually this is the fluorescent light. Tom LaRue was telling me that this is a 12 volt light and it's bright. I know it's bright because this is to light up your uh, document so you can scan it. And there's supposed to be a lens inside you can use as a magnifying glass. Sort of like an eyepiece. Tom has a video on that. This is the scanner lens that Tom LaRue was talking about in his video. He says you can use this as, a, as an eyepiece to do close-up work. So the scanner has a set of mirrors. It's a very complex set of mirrors to reflect the image. So the image can be picked up by the by the lens here. So this is how it looks. And this is the power supply. There's heat sink, transistors, capacitors, and uh, this looks like some kind of uh, trans transistor MOSFET, something like that. A, bi a big big capacitors here. This is the control board. There's not much I can use except uh, except the cap. This is some kind of uh, controller, the CPU, Epson. And of course I have a few motors. This is the stepper motor that uh, I was showing the other day. And then two good sized DC motors. This one here and this one here. I haven't taken this part out. I don't want to ruin the mountings because I might find some use to mount the uh, to use the frame to mount the motors on, and then a lot of little cables and rollers, rubber wheels, springs. You can use springs. Yeah, anything that moves like that, there's a spring inside. So basically. That's what it is. And what I can't use, then I'll throw out. And of course, a whole bunch of screws.